Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Today I'm sharing with you hand stamped clay bowls. I shared this uh, about a week ago on Instagram and I got some really fabulous feedback and I wanted to take a moment and show you how I made these. They're so easy and so much fun and the sky really is the limit with these folks. You could decorate these in so many different ways with so many different types of stamp sets and that's what makes them so fabulous is you actually get to use your card making stamps to make something else, a clay bowl. So this is the air dry clay that I'm using. It's, I believe it's pronounced DOS. It's an Italian air dry clay. I've used this in the past to make Halloween costumes for my kids and I really liked how it worked. Uh, it doesn't shrink a whole lot. There is no cracking as it dries provided that you don't add excessive heat to it, but I'll get to the, more of that in a minute. The other thing that I really enjoy about this particular brand, brand of clay is there's a ton in the package. You could really, really go for the gold and to make lots of different projects with just a single package package of this clay. And I will have this linked down below as well as over on my blog with a few other options for you as well. All right, so let's start taking a look at some of these stamps. I did not get to use all of them, but I did use a few. I'm going to start with the Rebecca Lace background stamp by Simon's Stamp. This is gorgeous when it is stamped, especially if you stamp it in a darker color. And this one is the Simon Says Stamp Circle Doodle background stamp. This one is also really fabulous. I could think of so many different color combinations you could do with this. This one is the You Matter background stamp by Simon Says Stamp. Now, I did use this on a set of bowls for myself, but I did not show it here in the video today. However, when they're done, I will share those over on Instagram. This is the Hero Arts Bold Garden Bold Prints background stamp. Stamp. This is also another fun one. It'd be super great in lots of different colors. This is the Simon Says Stamp Leaves background stamp. This one is really fun um, for metallic colors. This one is my favorite things, Floral Fantasy. This one is really awesome to color in with Copics and colored pencils, but wait till you see it on a, in a clay bowl. This is the My Favorite Things Whimsical Waves background, and we're going to talk about uh, rubber stamps more here in a minute. I am going to show you some clear stamp options, but again, I'll get more into that here soon. This is the Newton's Nook Beautiful Blossom stamp set. I didn't get to use this one today, but it got me to thinking all of those fine details in the stamp probably will look really amazing inside a clay bowl. This is the My Favorite Things Distressed Pattern Stamp Set. I, again, I didn't get to use that one, but it would be really fun. This is the Catherine Pooler Beautiful You Stamp Set. I think this one would also be really cool in different colors. You could really play up the colors of the flowers and then green for the leaves. This is Alta New Henna Elements. And I think this is another one that would be lots and lots of fun to use. Now I did do a test run with the Hero Arts You're So Lovely Stamp Set, this one right here. However, I ruined it, so I don't get to show that one to you. This is Avery L. Banner and Wreath stamp set. Now I do show you what I do with this one later on in the video, and I could think of so many different options for this one as well. And this one is the Alta New Garden Treasure stamp set. Uh, I do show you a little bit of color layering in this video on these clay bowls, and not with these stamp sets. I use end up using some Hero Art stamp sets. I'll talk about that later on, but these are a lot of fun. This one is the Alta New Beautiful Day stamp set. Again, I didn't get to use that one. These fine little uh, stamps inside the stamp set could also be loads of fun on these bowls. So there's lots and lots of different options. Now, I will tell you from the get-go, rubber stamps do work a little bit better than the clear ones, but it also depends on what kind of your ink you're using. We'll talk about that more in a minute. 
So now I have a chunk of the clay uh, that I took off the entire block because you don't want to take off too much at once. You don't want it to dry out. You do have a little bit of play time in with this particular clay. It doesn't immediately dry. So you, you have a little bit of time. You just don't want the whole entire package sitting open on your table if you don't need it because it will start drying out and it will affect the end result. So now I'm just rolling this out with my rolling pin and my husband thinks that it is outrageous that he had no idea that we even owned a rolling pin until I got it out for this video and it wasn't for baking, it was for crafting. So there you have it. Any rolling pin would probably work just fine or anything to uh, smooth out your clay. Now, as far as thickness goes, I don't really have a particular thickness. I just kind of went by feel. If it's too thick, then it starts to bunch up inside your bowl. If it's too thin, it will buckle in on itself and you won't be able to sand it out and it won't look right. So I'm thinking probably if you put two quarters together, that would probably be right about the thickness that you want your bowl to be. I have some glass prep bowls from my kitchen and that's what I'm going to use as my mold. So not only did I use it to cut out the circle of my clay, but I'm also going to use it to actually shape my bowl and these work out perfect. Now it's not going to be as deep as your bowl because of the diameter. So if you want it to be as deep as your bowl, then you need a larger diameter in order to cut it with. I'm going to start with the Rebecca lace stamp or background stamp. And here's what I've noticed with inks. Pigment inks work so much better than dye inks. However, you can use dye inks, but I found that the best results came from pigment inks. And I also found that the most fun result that I had were from pigment inks that had some sort of glitter or shimmer in them because that embeds within the clay and it looks amazing. So I'm going to leave my background stamp face down on my or upside down on my work service and then I'm going to take my little circle of clay here and I'm going to set it right on top. Now it is thick enough it allows me to pick it up without without hurting it in any way. I'm pressing it down a little bit one way and then I'm going to flip it over. It is stuck to my background stamp at this point because obviously there is some moisture within that clay and we're going to use that to our benefit and flip it over and now I'm going to really give it a fairly solid push it, because I want it to indent within the clay. Now you don't want it to push so hard that it makes your, it squishes everything out on your clay, but you, you want it to kind of have a little bit of an indentation from the rubber stamp. It's perfect when it dries and you start sanding it. So now I'm just setting it in the bowl. It, it's surprisingly you, it's surprisingly easy to work with. You, you wouldn't think so. You would think that you'd need to be careful, but you don't. So now I just have it set in there. See all of that space in there. I want to, you could leave it like this, but I want to get that clay down inside the bowl. So the, the center of that circle is touching the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm very carefully working around the edge all the way around and it should start to take shape in the bowl and eventually it will go down the bottom. So now we have the My Favorite Things Floral Fantasy Stamp Set and the Delicata Celestial Copper uh, Pigment Ink. I think of all of the inks that I used, I think the Delicata inks were my favorite. I don't have any in color. I just have black, silver, white, gold, copper, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But I think the colors would be super fab. I think those would make really, really great images. So again, I'm doing the same thing. I have picked up my circle of clay. I'm just laying it wherever I want on this background stamp. With this one, it's fun because there's all sorts of different uh, patterns on the background stamp. You could even make a set of bowls where it showcases a different section of the background stamp. That would be so much fun. So anyways, I'm doing the same thing again and I'm pushing down uh, fairly firmly 
Uh, because I really want that indentation within the stamp. And look at this. How much fun is that? I would like to see this in different colors or even do different colors across your background stamp so they are all within the same bowl, almost like an ombre. That would be tons of fun. Now, I give you a better idea here how I'm pushing this down into the bowl. It, you kind of do need to be a little bit careful as you're pushing down because it does create these indentations around the rim of the bowl and you're going to have to sand that out later. I will talk about different finishes on these bowls when we get to it, but as I was making these, I was kind of mindful about how I wanted them to look when they were done and also how much effort I really wanted to put into sanding them. So this obviously the smoother you can get it while it you're shaping it and it dries the better off. And another thing that I did that I found that created or helped me a bunch was I kind of went around that edge there and I just kind of pushed it in very lightly to get rid of some of those dimples as you can see right there that are on the side of the bowl. This clay, when it is dry and you start sanding it, it is super soft. It is really easy to sand. However, you, every time, the more that you have to sand it, the, the more you're kind of reducing the integrity of the strength of the bowl because you're literally taking away pieces of the bowl and you don't want to do that. All right, this is the hero, or I'm sorry, the Simon Says Stamp Leaves background stamp. And this time I'm using Memento Lux and the gray flannel. I like this particular ink because it has some blue undertones. And I thought with a, a white bowl, it would be really cool. Here, I kind of make a little bit of a, a mistake. Now, I talked earlier about how you want to press firmly on that. Well, that's fine. You still want to do that. But if you'll notice when I ink that up, you can see the ink that's in between the images and you don't want that because what's going to happen is when I push down on that clay, it actually pushes in between those images and it's going to pick up that ink. So what I suggest is when you ink up a stamp like this, that you just use a light touch as you ink it up so you're not getting any ink in between those images and then you won't have it on your finished product product now i didn't mind it too much because i'm pretty sure everybody in the house is going to inherit one of these clay bowls because now i have a ton and i don't know what i'm going to do with them but if i were to give these as, as a gift this would really bum me out because look i have ink there now where i didn't want it now i could probably take a very damp um paintbrush or something like that, something soft, or maybe even a baby wipe. And I could probably work that out. However, it's just something to keep in mind as you make these. Again, I'm doing the same thing. And I thought at one point I would try to make one of these more shallow. And I kept forgetting every time I put it in the bowl. So all of them are fairly deep bowls. But I think if you wanted to save yourself a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, you could just simply set those in there and create just a little shallow bowl and it would still be really cool. So now I'm working around the edges again and you can kind of, the more damp the clay is, like the faster you can get these done and get them stamped and get them in the bowl, the more moisture you have in that clay and the easier it is to actually get it inside the bowl without creating a whole a whole bunch of dimples and therefore a whole bunch of work down the road if that makes sense so that one is done now i wanted to try one more thing so i'm going to take some shimmer spritz and i'm shaking it up really good because i want to make sure that all of that shimmer is mixed up really good and i'm going to take my bowl off to the side and i'm going to and i spritz it inside the bowl now this has a boatload of shimmer in it. It is really cool. That being said, when I go to finish these, you're not going to notice them that much, but I'll talk about that more in a minute. Okay, so now we have the Avriel Banner and Wreath stamp set. This is the first clear stamp set that we're going to use, and I have some Memento Lux Teal Zeal ink. Here's what I've noticed about the clear stamps. They do work pretty good 
with a pigment ink. However, out of all of the pigment inks that I tested, I actually found that the Avery L pigment ink worked the best. The Memento Lux, it's a really good pigment ink. Any any day of the week, I really enjoy it. The colors are fabulous. It stamps great on cardstock, all that good stuff. And it worked pretty good here. However, up close, what I noticed was it has a, quite a bit of extra moisture to it. So here's what we're looking at. We have the moisture in the clay. We have the moisture in the pigment ink plus these photopolymer stamps are slick and they're actually a lot more slick than what a rubber stamp was so you could use probably like the memento lux ink with a rubber stamp on these and you probably would it would probably be just fine but what i noticed as i stamp these that it the clear stamp wanted to shift just a tiny bit more than what the rubber stamps did with this particular kind of ink. Now, I do end up using the Avriel pigment inks a little bit later down the road, and I believe I show you that here in the video, and I can instantly see a huge difference. So that's always a good option for you. The Delicata inks, they didn't quite have the same um, the same moisture level, I suppose, but I didn't get to try those too much with any clear stamps, so I can't say for certain. There is a, a little bit of trial and error here with different inks and different stamps. I did test out some Catherine Pooler inks, and normally I love her inks, but the clay just immediately absorbed it, and even with the darkest color, after two days of drying, you couldn't even see it on there. So that was a bummer. It didn't work out too well. So this is what this one looks like. And I was just totally messed around with this. I really adore this darling, darling stamp set. So I was like, how many different images could we get on this bowl with this little cutie patootie stamp set? This would be really fun in lots of different colors, but the Momento Lux Teal Zeal is my favorite. So this bowl was just a lot of fun. And the more I stamped, the more of a feel I got for how the clear stamps with the pigment ink on clay worked. Okay, so I sprayed this one down with shimmer spritz as well, but I was actually just thinking. I think that Ranger Perfect Pearls would be really cool on these because they they do bind when they get wet. There may be enough moisture in this clay that it would it would attach itself, the perfect pearls would attach itself to the clay as it dries. You could probably also spritz it with water, add the perfect pearls, spritz it with water, and then let it dry that way. And I bet you that would turn out really cool. If somebody decides to give that a try, please do share it with me. I'd love to see how it turns out. So I'm just making sure that I have this one inside the bowl. Now, the next stamp set that I'm going to show you is actually a color layering stamp set. Is It is the Hero Arts Bird and Branch stamp set. I did mention that there is a little bit of drying time with these. You have a little bit of time to play. You don't want to take forever, but you do have some time to play. So I'm going to give some dye inks a try, and I noticed several things about dye inks. The color, the intensity of color makes a huge difference. Lighter colors, they're not going to show up that much. Now you could double stamp them, you could triple, triple stamp them, and with some colors that would probably be just fine. But overall, I suggest that you go with a darker color. Now Hero Arts, Simon Says Stamp, Lawn Fawn, Gina K, they're all pretty close to the same formula, so it would be the same principle. I already mentioned what the deal was with Catherine Pooler inks. Uh, w plus nine inks would probably work just as well. But I figured since I was using the Hero Art stamps that I would try out Hero Arts inks to go with it. Now, I am using the Hero Arts Deep Ocean Hybrid ink. This one worked out pretty well too. However, I think the problem I had with this one is my ink pad was just a little on the dry side. So I did double stamp it and that made a difference. Now, there is some moisture in the clay. Again, we've talked about this, but with that moisture in the clay, it is going to make some of these inks blend together just a 
little bit. And that that could be a problem because it will change colors on you. So if you don't want it to do that, you need to keep that in mind and use a pigment ink because those will sit on top of each other. So this is where I found out that the Avery L pigment inks work amazing. This was the Avery L Sapphire ink. And there is just enough of a difference in colors, the blue colors, that it really stands, that third layer really stands out on that bird. It might be hard to tell in the video, but you can see it more in person. Now I'm using the Avriel Mimosa pigment ink. This is a really nice yellow and it is a little bit on the light side with the clay, but you can see it and when it dries, it is a little bit more noticeable. Now this was Avriel Truffle uh, pigment ink. Uh, I think the Hero Arts Brown Bark would work awesome too. Now I'm back to the Hero Arts Bubblegum uh, dye ink and look how bold that is, how well that stamps out. And I'm just really playing around, guys. I got to be honest with some of these. I really just didn't have a plan. I was just kind of testing it out to, to see how they turned out. And I think they turned out fun. I think they were awesome. And again, I am back to the Hero Arts Navy ink. So I have this sped up, but I will say that this one, it probably took me about six or seven minutes to get it stamped out. I didn't have a plan. I was just playing. And in that six, and se six or seven minutes, I didn't see a huge difference on how this clay was drying. There are other clays out on the market I cannot speak on how fast those dry, but this one, I, I really like this one because it gave me enough time to play around with it and to do what I need to do with it. The package does say that you can um, dampen this as it dries to kind of extend uh, the working time on it. I think when you're trying to put inks on this, it's probably not a good idea, but you're welcome to give it a shot. All right, so now I set those bowls to dry overnight and I did place them by my heater. Our furnace doesn't run super hot and I did make sure that they weren't directly over it, but I did make sure that they were getting some of the heat from it and it did help them dry. Now I have a couple of sandpapers and I have some tack cloth and I'll have those listed down below. I have a find sandpaper, I believe it was 220, yep 220. This is considered fine by woodworking standards. For these clay bowls, I would consider this a more of a, a rough or coarse sandpaper because it doesn't take a whole lot. I took one of the sheets out and I'm folding it in quarters so I have so I can actually keep it in my hand while I sand these bowls. As far as pressure is concerned, you don't have to put a whole lot of pressure on them. Now it, it, I guess it depends on how smooth you want them. I kind of left some of the imperfections in all of my bowls. I liked the handmade look to it. If you wanted these to look a lot cleaner, number one, you would need to make sure that you don't have as many uh, wrinkles and dimples in them as they dry or before they dry. Um, and number two, you would have to work at them a little bit more for, for sanding. Sanding these bowls will start to take away the integrity of, of the strength strength in, in the bowl. So you need to keep that in mind. That's another reason why you don't want your clay too thin. I have this sped up. They do take, I don't know, they were probably about five or six minutes per bowl for the 220 sandpaper. Because while I did want some of the imperfections in them, I did do my best to smooth them out uh, quite a bit. Um, they're not perfect, but quite a bit. And then also I'm going over the top because there's, you want to get this as smooth as you can get it. You want to get a lot of those rough edges off the top of it because it doesn't look right if you leave them. And the other thing is you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to actually gouge your bowl with the sandpaper. Again, 220 sandpaper uh, for woodworking standards, this would be you'd be getting pretty close to finishing any wood sanding, but with a clay bowl, it will leave streaks in it. You'll actually leave gouges in it if you push too hard. So just let the sandpaper do the work for you and just you're basically just running your hand over the surface and calling it a day.
So I'm dusting off as much of that as I can. The other thing is, folks, make sure that you're wearing safety gear while you do this. I did not. I highly recommend that you wear some goggles while, while you do this because by the time I was done, I had it in my eyes, I had it in my ears, I had it up my nose. So make sure that you wear some protective eyewear. And then also if you have a dust mask handy, I would also suggest you wear that and keep, make sure that you don't have any respiratory issues before you do anything like this. So now I'm at the extra fine sandpaper. This is 400 grit sandpaper, and this is actually really good uh, finishing sandpaper for these. I believe the ones that I shared on Instagram a week ago, I used a 600 uh, grit sandpaper. That is super fine in terms of woodworking. Regardless of what sandpaper you use, you're still removing the surface of your clay while you sand it. So you don't have to put quite as much work into it when you get to this point, but keep in mind you're still taking off the surface of your, of your bowl, if that makes sense. I also made sure to concentrate on those edges where they meet the, the rim of the bowl, and I kind of rounded those a little bit. You can decide whatever shape you want this bowl to take. I like the little bit more rounded edge. Now, I have some of my tack cloth out. The It comes in a package of three. The one that I'm not, or the two that I'm not going to use, I put back in here, and I'm going to put those in a plastic bag so they stay clean, and you can use them for future use or more clay bowls, whatever you'd like. Typically, this is also used in woodworking or painting, and these are invaluable with this. You could wipe these off with a very slightly damp cloth or paper towel. However, these tack cloths are amazing. Just like in woodworking before you get ready to paint or stain, they, they get down into all of those nooks and crannies, and they really do an amazing job removing all of that extra dust because you want that out of there before you seal them. Um, you may not notice it, but if you don't have it out there and you start putting that sealer on it, you will see the, the dust in the nooks and crannies when it's all done. And that's a total bummer. Okay, so now these are ready to be sealed. The ones I shared a week ago on Instagram, I used a spray sealant. This time I decided to do a little bit something different because what I noticed with the spray sealant is it took probably about six coats before I could even see a glossy finish. That clay just soaks it right up. So I'm using the Mod Podge Dishwasher Safe sealant and I'm putting a really, really thick layer on it. I'm also using a really old cheap paintbrush and it sheds like crazy. So I did end up with some hairs in these. Uh, I, it, I wouldn't use a really good paintbrush for this uh, because I don't, sometimes it's hard to get all of that Mod Podge out when you clean it. However, I would make sure that you're using paintbrushes that don't shed because otherwise you have it all over your finished product. So I'm just making sure that I have everything covered really well because I'm only going to do one coat of this. You could use any Mod Podge you like on these. I use the dishwasher safe because I want to make sure that I can wipe them out at a later date with a damp cloth and it's not going to remove any of that sealant. So these are done, folks. So this is what they look like all finished. There is one of the hairs from one of my paint brushes that I didn't get out of there before it dried. Now you can't see that shimmer spritz inside of it. So this is what I was talking about. It's really fun to spray that in there, but that gloss is so high from the Mod Podge that you really can't tell the difference. So this is the one that I made with the Hero Arts Bold Garden Bold Prints stamp. I did this one in Delicata black ink, and this was a lot of fun. I could see this particular print done in uh, maybe a set of really bright colors, all different colors. This was the Memento Lux gray flannel ink with the Simon Says Stamp leaves background stamp. This one is another one that I think would be really fun in different colors, or a set done in um, all metallics, a copper would be beautiful. This was the Rebecca Lace stamp set, 
with the Brilliance Pearlescent Poppy ink, I believe is what that was. This one is probably one of my favorites. This is just like I shared on Instagram a week ago. I will say again with that Rebecca Lay stamp, I would use dark inks with that folks. It turns out so much better. This is the My Favorite Things Floral Fantasy. This was with the Delicata Copper. That would be so much fun in other colors. This is the Whims Whimsical Waves. I believe I used the Delicata Gold uh, pigment ink with this. Again, this is another one that's super fun. Now, I sh I'm showing you this one because I took it out of the bowl before it was ready and I tipped it upside down to dry and the center of it kind of caved a little bit while it was driving, drying. So make Sure that you don't remove them from the bowls too soon. Okay, and I'm sharing this one with you because this is an excellent example of what happens when your clay is too thin and you try to place it in the bowl. You can't handle it as well. So everything gets kind of uh, wobbly, kind of fragile on you. And then when you go to sand it, it's that much more fragile and it will start breaking and chipping off if you're not careful. So just make sure that your clay is thick enough. Now, this one is the Hero Arts Color Layering Octopus Stamp Set. I used all Avery L. Pigment inks on this and this one um, with a clear stamp set Avery L pigment inks it was perfect everything just turned out so lovely look at all the detail on that octopus it's almost it's almost like stamping it on paper it worked out great this is that bird and branch that I shared with you earlier. It wasn't dry by the time I was ready to start editing this video, but I wanted to show this to you anyways, because you can tell when these are nice and dry. The clay goes from a kind of a dark gray to a nice uh, crisp, but white. And also as they dry, they get a little bit warmer. So when it's damp, it feels kind of cool to the touch, but as it dries, you can tell a little bit of a di difference in a temperature change and that's how you can tell that it's really starting to dry on you. All right, folks, that is it. We are good to go. I really hope you enjoyed my projects today. I have more details and links over on my blog, so do be sure to check that out. If you like what I shared with you today, hit that like button and share it with your crafty friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.